If you have your Bibles, I want you to hold your Bibles in your hand and say, this is my Bible. I have what he says I have. And I can do what he says I can do. And I am what he says I am. I am a believer. I'm not a doubter. I believe the word of God. And the word of God is true in my life. Come on, somebody, wave your Bible in the air. Make the devil nervous and the bookshop happy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I want to talk to you this morning on the subject, the power of words. The power of words. And I know some of you might be sitting there, or maybe some of you are watching me on Facebook Live, and you're saying, you know, Pastor George, we have heard you preach about this subject before. Why the preoccupation on words? Why are words so important? You know, why do we have to preach about words in the church? Let me tell you something. There is nothing in this earth so great or so powerful, including your physical body, that cannot be turned around by our words. The scripture talks about the power of the tongue in the book of James chapter 3. Because the tongue or words are so powerful that we cannot be casual about the words that comes out of our mouth. Say amen somebody. So we can turn around every situation with our words. Let me say that again. You can turn any situation in your life by the words that you speak. The entire course of nature, whether it's future or whether it's the present, and the circumstances surrounding every human being are controlled by that person's words. Your words matter. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I know there is a slogan going on right now in the world that says, Black Lives Matter. Let me introduce a new slogan in the body of Christ. Your words matter. Say my words matter. So your words are not just, you know, something that you can play around with. Your words matter because your words set spiritual laws in motion. So it's very important that you understand that part. I want us to turn our Bibles to the book of Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20 and 21. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20 and 21. If you can just play softly on the side. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20 and 21. I'm about to finish. Say amen, somebody. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20 to 21. It says in the old King James Version, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall be filled, shall he be filled. Death and life, come on somebody say death and life, are in the power of the tongue. Now notice what the Bible says. The Bible says that death and life are hinged on your tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So that means you can produce and you can see life in your life when you speak life with your mouth. Say amen, somebody. So the Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. The Bible says that you have the ability to produce death with your mouth and you have the ability to produce life with your mouth. Why? Because words that are coming out of your mouth matter. Words that are produced from your mouth, whether you are 16 years of age or you are 73 years of age, whatever you say with your mouth matter. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Words, as I said, they set spiritual laws in motion. The words that you speak, they can set the law of sin and death in motion. Or the words that you speak can also set the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus in motion. Because the spiritual laws 
are set in motion by the words you speak. That's why sometimes we confuse our angels. The Bible says that God has given us angels as ministering spirits. And so sometimes we come to church and we proclaim with our mouths that by the stripes of Jesus that I am healed. We also proclaim with our mouth that we will never be broke another day in our lives. We also proclaim with our mouths that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guards our hearts and our minds. But when we get out of the doors of this church, we start speaking something that is totally different. Now, you have set your angels in motion when you said, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. And your angels started running towards getting your healing to come and manifest in your life. And then when you get out of this church and you start saying something different, now your angels don't know what to do because angels respond to words of faith. Angels respond, uh, or respond to the words that are lined up with the word of God. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So words matter. Come on, somebody say, my words matter. The Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Words are the most important things in the universe. Words are the most important things in the universe. Now let me tell you something. When God created the heavens and the earth, how did he create it? He created the heavens and the earth using words. He said, let there be light and light was. He said, let there be, you know, the fish of the sea and the fish was. Let there be trees. Let there be sun. Let there be this. And the Bible says that when he spoke those things by faith, the scripture says that those things came to pass and God looked at it and he said, this is good. What do you want to say this is good too when you look at it? You got to change the words that you speak. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your words as a believer matter because the words you speak will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Say amen somebody. So faith filled words will put you over but fear filled words will defeat you. If you keep on going around speaking fear all the time, that's what you are going to experience. Have you ever heard someone say that you know, you the, uh, the, the things you have been saying are now a self fulfilling prophecy in your life. You have been saying it so many times, it's even part of your life and it's come, you know, uh, uh, true in your life. And so that's why as a believer, you got to speak faith-filled words because it is faith-filled words that will put you over and fear-filled words will defeat you. Say amen, somebody. So words are spiritual containers that carry power. Words carry power. It's not just, you know, you know, you got to be very intentional about the words you speak. And you have always heard me say this, and especially to parents, that you cannot, you know, go around telling or saying to your kids, you are, you know, as bad as, you know, somebody that I have met many, many years ago, or you are just like your uncle who drinks alcohol all the time. Because your words matter. You got to speak life to your children. Say amen, somebody. You got to speak life to your situation. Even if in the natural you are seeing that things are not going right, but change your words and you will change your future. Say amen, somebody. I said change your words, you will change your future. If you speak faith-filled words, your future will be different. If you speak fear-filled words, your future will also be different, but in a bad way. Say amen, somebody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And God is a God of principle. God is not going to violate that law. That law has been put in place. That's why Jesus also, when he was operating right here on earth, he was very careful about the words that he speaks. He said, consider what you say and consider what you speak. Jesus said to his disciples one time when he was, you know, showing them this principle about words, the Bible says that they were walking and as they were walking, they saw the fig tree on the one side. Jesus spoke to the fig tree because Jesus wanted to eat figs from that fig tree, but there were no figs on that fig tree. And the scripture says that he spoke to that fig tree. He said, 
no one will eat of you thereafter. He spoke to the fig tree. And the Bible scholars, they tell us that 24 hours down the line, when the disciples and Jesus passed even on the very same path, they found out that the fig tree that Jesus spoke to was shriveled or died from the root. Why did that fig tree die from the root? Because Jesus understood the power of words. And he was showing his disciples a principle that you and I today need to embrace in our lives if we have to make it, you know, in this life. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So words are spiritual containers. Jesus said, if you say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. And you do not doubt in your heart. The scripture says, you shall have what you say. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You shall have what you say. Some people say things they don't want to have. But the principle is, you shall have what you say. The question this morning is, what are you saying with your mouth? Come on somebody, I'm preaching better than you saying amen this morning. What are you saying with your mouth? What are you saying to your situations? What are you saying to your body? Your body, your physical body has got ears. It can hear and it will respond to whatever words you are speaking over it. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. If you say to your body that we are poor and we will always be poor and we are arms capsel and then that's how we are, your body is going to respond to that which you say. Say amen, somebody. Amen. But if you want to come out of that situation where you are, if you don't like your situation, speak. Get out of that situation with the words that you speak with your mouth. Let them call you arrogant. Let them call you out of touch. And I know that, you know, so many times in my life, people will call me out of touch because I will be speaking faith-filled words. I speak those things which I want to see happening in my life. Say amen, somebody. What does the scripture say? The Bible says, speak those things which are not as though they are. Say amen, somebody. Amen. The world called it craziness. They call it craziness. But you and I understand that words are spiritual containers that carry the power. Words can, can, words can translate love to somebody or words can speak something else to someone else. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And that's why when you propose to a woman, if you're a man, and you're proposing to a woman, there's nothing like a man should be proposing to another man. That's a twisted view. But if you are a man and you're proposing to a woman, you use words. You don't come around a woman and say, you go like this around her, and you're not saying anything. <laughs> what do you do? The, the skill of your words, Mr. Masala, will determine whether you're going to catch or not catch. Come on, can I get an amen from the ladies this morning? Some of you are married today because of words. Words matter. They came to you and they told you that you are bone of my bone, tumbalam like Kentucky. You know, uh, they, they said to you that uh, whatever they said to you and you melted. Words melted you. Some of you did not even look at how the guy looked like. And now that you are married, you say, I... <laughs> Words matter. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because words are the most powerful things here on earth. Say amen, somebody. And it's with our words that we can carry hate and fear. It is with our words that we can carry love and faith. Words are seeds sown with our mouths and they will produce after their own kind. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you speak faith-filled words, they will produce faith-filled results. When you speak fear-filled words, they will produce fear-filled results. Words are the process status of life. That's why when God created man, listen to me, house of faith. When God created man, when he put him in the garden, what did he say to him? He said, be fruitful 
and multiply. And from that moment on, if men lined up with the word of God, even to this very day, men will continue to be fruitful and multiplying. That's why when Jesus was going to Jairus' house, when he met with the woman with the issue of blood, the scripture says that, you know, the servants from Jairus' house, they came to Jairus and they said to Jairus, Jairus, don't bother the master. Your daughter is dead. And what did Jesus do? The Bible says that Jesus immediately said to Jairus, Hey, 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 Jairus, do not be afraid. Only believe. Because he knew that if Jairus would say something contrary to the miracle that Jesus was going to do, he was going to abort that miracle. But then Jairus didn't say anything. He just kept on believing. Jesus said, only believe. Because all things are possible to those that believe. And so he went to Jairus' house, Jesus went to Jairus' house, and he threw out everyone, threw out everyone from that house. Because he did not want people to, to, to abort or to say something wrong where that miracle is concerned. And Jesus went into that house and he said to that young girl, he said, Talitha Kumi. Some, some people say Ta Talitha Kumai. You know, when you want to be uh, 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 spiritual about it, Talitha Kumai. Hallelujah. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, Talitha Kumai. <laughs> but for us who are in this country during this Heritage Month in South Africa, we say, Talitha Kumi. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So when Jesus spoke words, he said, th those words, Talitha Kumi means, daughter, arise. And when Jesus says, daughter, arise, because Jesus spoke faith-filled words, the same words that he used in Mark 11 when he said, you know, to the fig tree, dry up from the root, is the same words that rose uh, the Jairus' daughter from the dead. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your words matter. Say, my words matter. Say, my words matter. That's why the enemy wants to use your mouth in order to create havoc in your life. Have you ever realized that sometimes, you know, when things are going wrong in your life, the, 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 there's an urge in the inside of you that wants to say, T tell, tell it, tell it like this. Most people can't even keep quiet about stuff. Sometimes, the wisdom of silence is what you need in certain situations. If you are pressured to say something wrong, you might as well just keep your mouth shut. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I know what I'm talking about. Even in a marriage institution, there are times when I want to get to my wife. Don't look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> there are times also in your life where you're thinking, let me just give them the peace of my mind. Let me tell you what's going to happen to your mind. That mind is not going to be 100% anymore because a peace has come out of it. Sometimes all you got to do is, Lord, help me. Help me. Oh, Lord, help me. Oh, God, I want to see you, but Lord, help me. And you just keep your mouth shut. And you'll be so amazed by how, how you know, the, the, the peace and, and, and the victory that you will have in your life. Say amen, somebody. There are times when I just say, Lord, you, you will fight my battles. There are times when I just say, Lord, you know, I'm not going to be fighting with my, my spouse or I'm not going to be fighting with so, whosoever. I'm just giving them to you. So instead of speaking bad things out of your mouth, this is the time to let God know about what is in your heart. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Say amen. amen. Because words are the process starters of life. Words are the building blocks with which we construct our lives and our future. We're building our lives by the words we speak. That's why I'm preoccupied about words. We're building our lives. These are building blocks. They're building blocks. If, if, you, if you continue speaking, and, and, and I've said this over and over again, you know, in, in, uh, in, in some of my preachings here at the church, that just before I had my first house I was going to a particular church and every Sunday after the service I will go 
driving around a particular suburb that I wanted to stay at. And there were particular buildings and houses that I loved. And I remember I would go there Sunday after Sunday saying, I will stay here. One day I will stay here. One day I will stay here. I remember speaking it. And the devil said, but you know, you're only earning 1,500. That's when I was still earning that amount of money. 1,500. How do you stay here? People who stay here, they don't earn the amount of money that you earn. But I said, one day I will stay here. Why? Because I was lining up my mouth with that which I want to see. I was building my future, you know, with the words of my mouth. Say amen, somebody. I said, one day I will stay here. One day I will stay here. And I remember going, at, 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 at the place was Sunny Hill. I, I, I would go to Sunny Hill all the time. I was staying in Hill, bro. And I would go there every time. And lo and behold, in 2001, I was staying at number four. I will never forget the, the address there. Number four, Elmwood Place. Why? Because I spoke it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God spoke things into being and you have the DNA of God in the inside of you. You can speak things into being in your life. Say amen, somebody. You have the genes of God. You have, you know, the God part in the inside of you. Say amen, somebody. Cut the long story short. Many years ago, I wanted to work at the DBSA, the Development Bank of South Africa, right here across the, the freeway. Every time I would drive to Pretoria, at that time, you know, I would drive to Mr. Masala's place. I would go there and come back. And every time I would pass that place, and I used to say, one day, I'm going to work in here, in this building here. And I kept on saying, one day. It took me two years of lining up my words to speak to a particular situation. In the natural, they told me that people like you who only just have an undergraduate degree or, uh, you know, a first degree will not qualify here. People who qualify at the DBSA are people with a master's degree and then a PhD and so forth and so forth. And I didn't have those at that particular time. But I, I knew that my words will go and speak on my behalf. I knew that my words were going to make a difference in that situation. And I kept on speaking to that building. I kept on speaking to that building. I kept on saying, I will work in there. I will work in there. And I remember, you know, one person told me that there were uh, 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 vacancies that are in there. But those vacancies are only for people that are within, you know, uh, you know, but there, there are times when they advertise and they are, it's only for, for in internal uh, uh, vacancies. So they told me that it's for internal vacancies. But because that thing was so big in me, I said, internal vacancies or no internal vacancies, I am going to apply. I applied. They looked inside. They couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. Searched high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. And so I went in there. I went for an interview. cut the long story short, they didn't even look at, you know, all the other th requirements that were in there. They called me in and went for that interview. And before I got the letter of appointment, I remember getting the news from people who were working in the department and they said, what did you say in the interview that made the person who is responsible in hiring people get so mesmerized? They said, what did you do in that interview? I said, well, I don't know. All I did, I just spoke whatever that came. Remember what Jesus said. Jesus said, when they bring you before councils, when they bring you before people, don't worry about what you're going to say. Come on, somebody. He said, I will be with your mouth. I will speak through you. 
When Moses said, I'm just a starter, God says, you know, I know, I know that part, but lay, I will use you. And I went there. I remember got a letter of appointment after getting a letter of appointment. I walked on the on the west wing of the DBSA. DBSA has got wings. So there was a west wing, east wing, and all. I went on the west wing of the DBSA. And I remember working on that passage. They said, Is this George Mosen? Is this is this the guy who, who did so well in the interview? They said, Yes. I said, Yes. I said, Hello, hello. And I became a say, you know, hey, a celebrate. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Became an instant hit in a moment. And I remember I worked in there and I worked in there and all of a sudden I, the, I, the, the, the CEO of the company noticed me. Now there's a young man here who is a project manager who is doing wonders and they gave me an award called the Knowledge Award or the Knowledge Worker Award of the Year. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All I'm saying to you is words are the building blocks which we construct our lives and our future. Words set boundaries. Words open up doors. Words close up doors. Words can elevate you. Words can put you down. Words can traject you into a glorious future if you're just careful of the words that you speak. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? Hallelujah. And so we got to be careful of the words we speak because words do matter. Say amen, somebody. Did you get something out of this teaching this morning? Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. 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 So be careful of the words that comes out of your mouth. God wants you to win, and you can win with the words that you speak.